Hi, my name is Kevin. I call myself the social cyborg because uh, in the past, I used to wear cameras all over myself and broadcast almost every minute of my life. Uh, since then, that was back in 2006. Since then, we've got Instagram, Google Glass and all that now, so there's no, no real need. But I was very interested in the idea of uh, distributed uh, decision making and the idea of uh, memory prosthesis, the very idea that what would happen if we can never forget. Okay, it's very seductive to believe that technology alone can bring about change in society. But uh, I was very fortunate to do a doctoral program in, uh, and focus my dissertation on what I call the Great Firewall of China. And we could see that actually, when it comes to technology, there are many other factors that come into play as well. There's the legal side of things, there's the marketplace, okay, how commercially viable, and also social norms that all come into play when it comes to whether technology is accepted into society. Innovation is something that we often regard as something that's very future-oriented. But way back in the past already, the artists themselves are one of the purest innovators that we know of. Um, in, the, in producing their works, uh, often they try to push the boundaries of what's possible. Some explore different mediums, different canvases, um, different ways to conceptualize their art and convey that, communicate that to the public. In a case of uh, Chen Wen Si's Plain Gibbons, for instance, he took traditional ink painting methods, but he went beyond by using different brushes to create different effects in the, the depiction of Gibbons. For example, the Gibbons hair was rendered using toothbrush uh, as, a, as a brush medium. Uh, so it allowed for very fine kind of uh, brush strokes. Um, there are also artists in Singapore Gallery 2 at the National Gallery of Singapore where you completely see no medium use at all, no, no uh, material at all, at all. And it's really the purest form of art because what this particular artist did was to give a set of instructions to the museum to carve a 5x5 five five, uh, etching into the wall and the floor and that's his contribution to the, to the collection. Um, it's an idea and the idea is what is most critical in art. Uh, we've also done things like image recognition and QR code scanning and things like that. And we're about to go into the realm of uh, augmented reality and VR as well. Um, you might wonder why is the museum so slow in picking all these things up? You know, these technologies exist in a long time already. Uh, the difference here is that we're trying to make this an everyday thing. And often, a lot of these technologies that are put out there, technologies exist, but the application and execution of it is, tends to be very poor. And we try and figure out ways and means to create the experience that makes it more seamless and painless for the end user. And so that process is often uh, behind the scenes. A lot of UX is done, user experience research is done before we actually launch something. So um, these are some of the, the projects we're working on. Uh, there, there will be more interesting things we're trying to work on, which we've not uh, you know, fulfilled yet. Things like recreating history through holograms. It's been a long time dream of many of us, but uh, we've been exploring different holographic technologies to get there. Campus Party to me exists as a space that uh, combines the two from ideas all the way to execution. And that's very sexy to those of us who've been invited to speak because many of us who are participating in this are makers ourselves, are people who dream of something and don't let anything else hold us back from actually producing it.